How's it going everybody? Raising Hell here and today I'm looking at a game called Project High Rise. In a nutshell, what Project High Rise is about is building your own skyscraper. Think of it like SimCity inside a building. So I'm just going to give a brief overview of what the game is about. So I'm just going to go ahead and load one game that I had been previously playing a little bit. Now I have not played this game extensively. As you can see here, we're only how many stories up? Um, I'm just gonna find that. We're only six stories up so far. Obviously skyscrapers, I mean, by the definition, this probably would not qualify as a skyscraper. So what you can see going on here is a little bit more building up. So you start with just a little small building and you have to actually grow it into a skyscraper, which is not the usual order of business when it comes to building skyscrapers, you know. Usually they will be fully set up and then the occupants will start moving in. But what you have here is uh, we have four different types of occupants in our skyscraper. We can have residential, such as apartments. Uh, I've only unlocked three so far, so you can have studio apartments, small bedroom, two bedroom, and so on. You can have shops. These provide services and goods to the people who actually live or work in your um, skyscraper. And you can also have restaurants, obviously provides food and other amenities, I guess you could say. And you can also lease offices. So you have four basic tenants, I guess you could say, in your building. If you look right here, these are all small offices. I don't actually meet the requirements for getting bigger ones and they pay you, they pay you rent. So for example, this person here, they're paying me $170 in daily rent. And the thing is, as you grow, you have to make sure you provide them uh, with the needs that they are looking for. So in other words, this office might require, let's take a look at the utilities once. Oh, the game was actually running. Um, the, require, offices require different things. So here we can look at the utilities. Right now I have a lot of phone lines a lot of power, power pretty much goes everywhere, it's pretty much a necessity. And also some water running to the apartments up above. And you can also have gas and something else I think, uh, cable TV. So this this game is sort of set in uh, maybe a period between mid 90s, well, let's say late 80s to mid 90s. Obviously you can see the computers that they use are old CRT TVs. Uh, hmm, yeah, they actually look yeah, a bit more I would say probably mid mid to late 80s actually. So you're not gonna have any internet cable or anything like that, but you would provide power to each of these businesses and then in return, they, uh, they're they happy or whatnot. In this case, this business is not too happy because the rent is too high. Employees un seem unhappy. Uh, yeah, so actually there's some pretty mediocre stuff there and I have not actually found a way to get regular businesses. I wish we, could, we should probably speed this up a little bit because it seems a little bit on inactive right now, doesn't it? Like there's nobody really around and it will definitely change. Here we, are, here we have a whole bunch of elevators going up to the top. We have grime. You can take a look at all these different schematics, trash, smells, noise, elevators. As you can see, our elevators are not reaching too well over here. I probably should put some more elevators in over there. Traffic view and you have to maintain everything. So as you build up, you can build up simply by going to the construction menu and adding more of these. So for example, we've wanted to add another floor. Just go like that. We're going to need an elevator to access it. So we're just going to connect that elevator to our existing elevators and our construction workers are already busy building up our new floor. And that's basically how you expand the building. Uh, certain tenants like being in different areas of the store. Obviously the shops will like being in the more uh, traffic heavy areas like this place goes directly to the subway I believe it's a subway anyway it could just be a bus route uh, but given the fact that it's a large city setting I imagine a subway is infinitely more probable uh, but here you can see you can see a lot of people already going through and obviously as you expand and you can take a look at how much room you have the the building gets quite big see I I've already put in I'd say probably four hours into the game and this was basically as far as I got because I'm a slow player like that. And in addition to the regular just free building kind of thing, there are also some scenarios with set uh, difficulties. So we already got started here on this floor. Let's see if we can build some amenities. So if I decide to make this into more apartments, obviously apartments should be on the top. Uh, in this case, we're building studio apartments because we don't meet the qualifications for other apartments yet. They need more um, more commercial buildings, more stores, and the like to sell amenities, such as food and regular retail stores. So we're going to need special goods, uh, depending upon what, what our clientele is. So for one thing, here we have 
the small apartments. Now, small apartments, they need water and electricity, the very basic ones. And here you can go into the utilities. Now, unfortunately, I do not have a utility closet up here yet. So we're actually going to have to go to the construction and expand our building all the way across over to here, where I currently have my line of utility closet set up. So I'm going to go back to the utilities and now I should be able to place a wiring closet right ab directly above the previous wiring closet. And then I can actually bring some power over to my new apartment right there. We're also going to need water though. And that water closet is right next to the power closet. So I can simply extend it one floor like that and run the pipe over. Same thing. Obviously this costs a lot of money. So probably should have planned that a little bit better. But since we're going to be expanding the floor anyway, it's no big deal. So now we, that we have water and power coming to this apartment, we can actually get invested in building another basic studio apartment. And as you can see right here, they tell you the requirements. I don't necessarily like this aspect of the game. There is no easy way to see this information unless you actually have a space prepared for your potential or prospective client. But that is the way the game is set up at the moment. I think there was just a general lack of uh, readily accessible information. The information is more oftentimes than not there. It's just difficult to get to and sometimes the circumstances required to access it are what I would consider extraordinary. So in addition to the electric line requirement and the water pipe hookup that this apartment requires, we're also going to have to have trash bins on the same floor. We look here at the deluxe studio. In addition to the aforementioned requirements. They're also going to need a gas pipe hookup. It's another utility that I forgot about. And they also hate noisy areas and hate smelly areas. So definitely you want them up higher. So that way, you know, the shopping going on down below does not bother them at all or, or any sort of office work. They also uh, may require the service of a plumber from time to time. So you definitely have to make sure that you have uh, in, we're going to just want to build the standard apartment. And as you can see right now, it's still not constructed. These construction workers will move over and work on it once they have the time. And down in the basement, and your basement can extend quite a few layers, like 10, 10 floors down under the ground you can go. This is generally where you will have your management. So like we have storage bays right here. This provides storage for stores. They especially need some storage areas. If they are selling goods to customers, they need somewhere to store this stuff. Here we have the power transformer. Here we have a water meter. You can supply water to 50 tenants, 50 different rooms, and pretty much so on. Like office supplies are going to be required by accountants maybe, and then lawyers might require a dispatch service. It depends upon what the tenants are that you're trying to lure in. And uh, it's another area that's not the clearest. Like right here, we can take a look at the office services. There are a lot of them and a lot of them are still unlocked, but at least they tell you which ones are actually um, like there is demand for them. And as you expand, there more demand will be created. So you have to make sure you keep an eye on it. Generally, when a tenant is not happy, they will show a little unhappy face. Like if I crank the rent up, where do we have the rent report right here? We can adjust the rent, charge them more. Right now they think rent is already too high. And if we turn it up too high, like 520, they might actually decide that they might want to leave. Uh, no, they're still not trying to leave. Okay, we have to find somebody a little bit more unhappy, I guess, to make them leave. In general, these stores, I have not seen them turn much of a profit. Uh, they actually like that. Let's turn it all the way up. No, okay, well anyway, take my word for it. If the tenants are too unhappy, they will actually leave and then you'll be left holding the build to clean up their area. And you know, there is an initial cost to actually build a, a, a place to begin with. This is a basic studio apartment. Apparently, okay, our residents have now moved in. So that is essentially how you expand the whole thing. And it uh, becomes more entailed as you go along, obviously. Like there are favors that you have to curry with different politicians and whatnot, which will give you benefits. There are contracts that you can fulfill. If we take a look here at contracts, these are what I would like consider quests in a way. They are a way of the game sort of holding your hand or pointing you in the right direction so that you complete objectives that generally are in your best interest in terms of expanding your skyscraper. I've, I've undertaken a couple and I've finished quite a few so far. My current one requires me to build four small stores 
and increase the population density to 100 population. I currently have 79 population. And as you can see, in most cases, each building, each apartment, I'm not really sure what these units are called in a skyscraper. I'm not overly familiar with skyscrapers, but generally at the small level, each one holds one person. So yeah, here's an office, how many there are one employee and that increases the population of the tower by one. And once you meet the goal of 100, then you get a small reward for that. What is the reward right now? If we have 100 people, we're going to get $2,000 on completion. So it's not a big deal, but at the same time, it does help motivate you to accomplish certain objectives. And generally, the, the objectives steer you in the right way towards developing your skyscraper in a sustainable manner. Then we also have influence down here. In addition to here, here's my money, obviously. Uh, I'm making 2,600 a day. So unlike SimCity, which I always had a problem with SimCity 2000. What is the game? The one that came before the modern day SimCity. I always had a problem with that one. I could never balance my budget. It seemed like I was always in going in the hole. Probably did, probably did not understand the game sufficiently. But in this game, it does not appear to be too difficult to make money, at least on the medium difficulty, which is what I'm playing at in this game. So influence, they remind me a bit of social policies from Civilization V, but they unlock different abilities. Like here we have operations. Uh, if we unlock this, it will cost us 25 influence. We currently have 64 and it will give us a second larger construction office. I think I want to start with one construction office. This will basically, if I recall correctly, allow us to upgrade and build additions to the building faster. And there is also an improvement that has to be done. For example, this place, as you can tell, it's starting to fall down. The wallpaper is looking a little crummy and you'll have to repair it from time to time. The renovation cost will cost $120. You can renovate it right there or you can actually, there is a room that I'm not exactly sure. One thing that the game does not necessarily do very well, right here it is. This is the maintenance office differentiating between different types of offices. I mean, I can tell they have different furniture, but just at first glance, a lot of them look very similar, even when they probably shouldn't look very similar. So there are four basic types of small offices. Like there are lawyers, CPAs, uh, like graphics designers, and there's one other one. I forget what it is though. I probably could build, let's just build another one and check it out. So here, right here are the office tenants. I already did the residential, the apartments and can look for their insurance offices, accounting offices, legal offices, and creative offices. They pay a different amounts and they have different requirements in general, which means that to be efficient, you probably either have to group them up or actually just run utilities to everything. Uh, the insurance offices are generally the least demanding. They just require an electric line. If we go down here to creative offices, probably the most demanding. They, this one expects bottled water services, which I don't actually have yet in the basement and in addition to like a courier service. This one here though, it requires courier service and office supplies, both of which I currently have built in the basement and they will pay me 155 rent per day. They also require electric line and a phone line. So we can build that, that will, we definitely have the ability to support that. Extend the electric line once again over to there and then go ahead and get the phone line and extend it as well. If you do not extend those phone lines and electric lines before they move in, they generally tend to get very unhappy. And I actually once had a diner move out of the building because I had, and it wasn't able to provide them with water for half of the day. And apparently that was enough to upset them to the point where they just moved right out. In addition to the influence, which I just covered, we also have media buzz. And this basically gives you like a small boost. If you think of this game in terms of a mobile game, where you would pay for perks. That's kind of what Media Buzz does, except obviously you're not paying for micro microtransactions as it's a complete game in its current state. But uh, yeah, you can buy things like, if we go, we're calling the favor of this do. Uh, I know there's one that allows you to build here. You can build floors more cheaply. If we use this one, it's a steel. It will cost us 80 Buzz, Media Buzz, and it will allow us to build floors at half the construction cost for a limited amount of time. That's basically what you do with Media Buzz. So you want to make sure you use those perks at a time when you have the money to expand or whatnot. Uh, it's not just something that you do all the time. Uh, there's population, as I pointed out before. Here are visitors. We don't have many. This is my prestige and this affects the buildings or the tenants I have access to rent to. Uh, what else do we have going on here? We can actually build artworks. I do have enough except for money. I don't have quite enough money to afford an artwork and artworks is they generate a little bit more influence and I think a little bit more buzz. They might attract some more visitors. I've not 
experimented too much with art because here's the thing right since you're building a skyscraper up from the ground rather than designing it from well designing it and then moving the occupants in we're sort of building onto it it means that we're going to have to tear out a lot of stuff that is currently occupying these floors as we expand obviously we're going to need more offices we're going to need bigger offices all kinds of stuff like that our tenant needs are going to change and I wasn't quite willing to invest in paintings that cost $5,000 quite yet. I, I felt that was a little bit later in the game. I probably should do that. I'm not sure how that works all overall. And there's also the problem that I have found. Here we have art. I, these things don't cost anything, but they can adjust the appearance of rooms. See, we can change the wallpaper right there. And interestingly enough, you can also put down furniture and indoor plants. These things, again, they don't cost anything for some mysterious reason. But when it comes to deleting them, they actually perform a little bit differently. Uh, you can take the bulldozer here, but you won't be able to remove everything. I, I, in general, I did not get this at first. You can remove the wallpaper with that command. But to remove these little plants, I think you actually have to click on them and then click the bulldoze to get rid of them. I, I wasn't able to get, I, I wasn't able to bulldoze them with this without removing the wall behind it, which which didn't make any sense to me really, but it seemed to be a general downside to it. So there's a lot of pre-planning that goes into this game, obviously. If you want to have a sustainable tower that goes all the way up to the top, you're going to have to put your utilities in certain places and plan for f future expansion, for example, with the water unit and the, elect the electricity transformer, yeah. We will need to upgrade to bigger ones as time goes on, which means we're gonna have to continually shuffle things around in here and make more space for them and whatnot. Right there is our garbage, and we did not actually add a garbage container up there. You can add a garbage by going into the building infrastructure and adding a garbage container like that. That was actually required by the house. Um, they might not be happy. Oh, they're still happy. Yeah, the garbage takes a while to fill up, I've noticed, so they won't immediately feel the effects of it, like not having power or having water, it would seem. I'm not sure how phone work does. And here we have a elevator that's out of order. Apparently, it's broken, but we have our maintainers, our fixer-uppers, what are they called? The maintenance office, so they should get on that as soon as possible. They're just sitting around right now. Oh yeah, right there he is. He's now fixing it. And you have a basically a day cycle. And at the end of every day, every 24 hours, you get paid. And then it'll also tally up your expenses. We saw this once and it should do it right now. Oh, cool. We actually got to it. So today our total expenses were 6700 And our total revenues were 7000 So we're actually outstripping our payments by about 1000 How much? $2,000? We spent a little bit more not all of that was actual maintenance cost so we're, we're in the green as it were in the black i'm not sure how that would be described both of them seem legitimate and that is actually pretty much what i have learned so far about city scott and not city skylines what is the so we're going to go back to the main menu that is pretty much what i've learned so far about project high rise obviously there are scenarios that you can play like i said before these set you up with a preset level of difficulty and they challenge you to take a situation and win from that situation. You don't start from the ground up. There are tutorials, mods, options, and that's pretty much it for it. So that's Project High Rise. Thank you very much for watching, as always, and I hope to see you next time.